All right. Well, welcome to our second live product tour of the new Equio experience. Uh, my name is Abby Kaufman, and as the product and customer support manager here at New Frontier Data, I'd like to thank you for your interest in Equio and for taking the time to join me today. So before we dive into the features of the new Equio experience, I wanted to provide a little bit of background. So since 2014, New Frontier Data has been collecting data on the global cannabis and hemp industries and uh, with the goal of providing industry stakeholders with actionable, vetted, reliable cannabis business intelligence. And in that time, uh, the cannabis industry has, has evolved significantly and so have the needs of industry stakeholders, particularly operators and retailers. So to communicate our commitment to all industry stakeholders, we recently enhance the entire Equio experience uh, to consist of now three data dashboards that are map-based, interactive, and intuitively designed to help co communicate that commitment. Um, and they essentially serve three purposes to help our subscribers to discover the market, to engage their consumers, and to ultimately compete to win in this increasingly competitive landscape. So the first of these new interactive data dashboards is going to be our retail dashboard. And we'll go through all of these in more depth, um, but just for an overview to get started. Um, the retail data dashboard um, contains valuable insights into purchasing behaviors uh, across product categories, and also uh, visualizes the distribution of uh, retail license holders and provides context into the distribution of, of all different cannabis license types throughout the United States and at the state level. And arguably, most excitingly, we also have, um, ge it's incorporating geolocation data to really help uh, retail operators understand foot traffic to their dispensary and nearby competitors, and um, also understand customer loyalty. And so if the retail is telling us what people are consuming and purchasing, then we also have the cannabis consumer dashboard to tell us not only who is purchasing cannabis products and consuming cannabis, but also why. So within this dashboard, you'll find uh, valuable insights into key demographic information um, and how uh, different ages, genders, and um, even income levels impact the types of product preferences, sources of cannabis, um, and other key insights to better understand and engage cannabis consumers. And then lastly, uh, we have the market data dashboard, which was which comprised the bulk of the previous Equio platform. So here you'll find the New Frontier Data's proprietary um, market um, met projections and, and modeling, as well as indices to allow you to really compare and assess opportunity, identify new opportunities, and understand the direction where the industry is going. These three new dashboards are in addition to all of the other features previously included with Equio subscriptions, including the data marketplace, all Canabyte subscription features, as well as access to our entire library of analyst reports and charts. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and dive right into the actual Equio dashboard. So this is the new Equio dashboard. When you first sign in, you're going to be able to see the home page to have it. It's all laid out right in front of you to make it easily navigate, easy to navigate. So you can easily access the information that you are seeking. I'm going to switch things around a little bit today and start with the cannabis market data that are in case you are an existing or former subscriber, to walk through the data that helped, um, you know, that that has made New Frontier Data the authority for for the cannabis industry intelligence. So, in the market data dashboard, uh, as you'll see, there is the map showing uh, this may look familiar for for former Equio subscribers. So here you can see the le the legality for each state in the United States. Um, and you can um, hover over within all of these dashboards. If you hover over a state, you can get more key data points or use the map filters to adjust what data is displayed within the map. So if you wanna see um, the compound annual growth rate and how that compares across, across uh, different state markets. The market data dashboard is, it features data for not only the United States, but also down to the state level. So here we can see um, the, the general cannabis market data. Um, so 12 key stats to kind of paint a picture of that legal market. 
um, as well as where it's going in the next five years. And then below, we can have a breakdown by market type going forward. Um, and one thing in New Frontier Data's analysis and reporting, um, we also would account for the illicit market to kind of better understand the potential barriers for um, you know, what, what, what factors impact uh, conversion from an illicit market to a legal market once the state, be state cannabis industry becomes operational uh, legally. Within this widget, there's also going to be a drop down to see, um, to understand the consumer and patient count. So out of all of the consumers in that state, how many of them are patients? Out of all of the uh, state's population, how many of them are, uh, are a registered medical cannabis patient? Um, we can also get a better sense of the, identifying the potential opportunity by taking a look uh, at the medical condition prevalence, the conditions that are um, exist in that population for the state or the national level, depending on where you are, um, to speak to the potential um, opportunity for the, med for, if, uh, for the medical cannabis market. At the state level of the market data dashboard, in addition to the two widgets we just walked through, you're also going to find a cannabis market opportunity widget. This widget also ties into the op market opportunity index uh, in the interactive map. As I'm sure most of us are aware, given the state by with the state by state you know approach to, to legalization and legislation in, in the United States, it's often difficult to uh, provide to, to or ascertain a side by side comparison of each state market and to really understand the opportunity, the access given the different market types and, and even just regulatory bodies within that state. So our um, proprietary algorithmic index provides that ranking to, to serve that purpose for industry stakeholders to really understand how each state's cannabis market stacks up against one another and uh, across these four key uh, inputs. You can also open uh, the compare all if you wanted to sort and see, you know, if you're particularly risk averse and you can see which state has the lowest risk rating and which one has, is, has the most. And then um, speaking of risk and opportunity, um, in the regulatory data widget at the state level in the market data dashboard, you're able to easily learn more about those types of risk factors by navigating to the, the page for the actual government regulatory agency for each market in each state, and even open up the uh, actual piece of legislation associated with that state's cannabis program by market type. So now that we kind of understand how that competitive uh, advantage with the market data, know where things are going, let's understand who is making up this market, what the consumers that are driving um, these, these figures. So like the market data dashboard, the consumer data dashboard is going to offer you um, data at the national United States level, as well as the states. In all of these dashboards, you're able to select a state from the dropdown or click into the state to get to where you're trying to go. Um, so here in this particular dashboard, all of the widgets are going to be the same at the state and the national level. Obviously the data will, will adjust uh, uh, based on where you are where you're looking um, and where you've clicked. So just like in the market, we're gonna pull out four key stats to help provide an overall sense of the cannabis consumers in the United States, uh, the density, how often they're consuming and how many medical patients uh, exist in, in the country. Um, and then for these, for these next two rows of widgets, um, these can be filtered and refined even further uh, by the age groups and by gender. So uh, in the first one, we're gonna see how, based on the filters applied, how that impacts uh, cannabis product forms consumed. Just as a side note, um, these, uh, the, these will um, always add up to more than 100% because several, most cannabis consumers may or may not consume more than one, one product form. Um, so that it's not an error if it's over 100%. Um, and then we also have some insights into how often people report consuming cannabis uh, and how, how much they, they report spending per purchase and where they're acquiring their cannabis. The great advantage of, of using the cannabis, our extensive consumer surveying, 
which um, allowed us to be the first company to create and identify, define cannabis consumer archetypes is that it, it can account for, for those illicit markets or those ones that are not operational yet to really understand um, the potential there as you're building out your business strategy or if you're looking to expand to a new state that may or may not have a legal market yet. Um, within these widgets, you can also change the data display if you have a preferred format for how you're viewing it. And then at the bottom, the aforementioned cannabis consumer archetypes. Um, this New Frontier data, uh, we first identified these archetypes back in 2018. And then most recently we revisited them since like the cannabis industry itself, the con cannabis consumers are also evolving. So within this widget, you can see, you can change how the display is. And if you want to learn more about a particular archetype, you can click on that detail to access some key data points, a brief summary of, of the archetype and the related kind of child cannabis profi consumer profiles under that kind of parent archetype. And we'll see a little bit more about these related profiles when we get to the retail data dashboard. And then also the understanding why people are consuming uh, cannabis, they're the primary motivators and drivers for, for consumption. Um, if you are interested in additional cannabis consumer insights and uh, like analysis uh, to contextualize some of the data in this dashboard, I recommend looking to our, um, our the 2021 Cannabis Consumer Evolution Report. Um, that also provides a great deal of insight into the methodology and, and um, details behind our um, proprietary, the cannabis consumer surveying that, that makes up this dashboard. And last but certainly not least, we have the retail data dashboard. So here we are able to see the uh, distribution of active and operational retail cannabis licenses in the United States, so dispensaries. And then uh, also down the page, we'll also see um, the, the distribution of other license types as well. So at, in this dashboard, in addition to the national and state level views, we can actually get even more granular down to the county level and even down to the individual dispensary level. So here we're gonna see this may look, this first widget in the retail data dashboard may look familiar to um, some of you if you were an Equio subscriber in the past. This is the product sales index. So this is visualizing the revenue share of uh, the seven primary cannabis product forms over time. Um, as the name interactive data widget suggests, all of these widgets for the most part are, are very interactive. So if you have the opportunity to sign up for a trial, highly recommend um, exploring and taking advantage of, the, of that free trial offer to do that and see what you can find. Um, you're able to deselect if you want to isolate particular product forms or just view it for a particular month instead of over time. Um, you're able to do that as well. Um, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is, it's not August yet, I apologize for that, um, is that within all of our interactive data widgets, uh, as part of our commitment to transparency, um, you're gonna find a tool tip. So this will tell you a little bit more about the uh, data sources, the frequency of updates, and also the so what, why our team of economists, uh, researchers, data scientists, why from their years of experience find this particular data to be helpful and applicable to cannabis industry stakeholders. So I did just wanna call that out as a potential resource if you're looking for additional insight into the data in these widgets. Next we have at the national level for the retail dashboard, the best selling products of, for the top, the top five products for the top three categories in the United States. Um, so this is pulling in some, the top performing brands and products within those brands. And, and of course the, the strains of flower. Um, and this is all coming from point of sale data so far, as is the value per transaction widget. So by default, we're gonna see just the, um, the amount spend in a single transaction across product categories um, uh, over time uh, on average. So, um, you know, if someone purchased edibles, this is not to say that edibles are $70 per unit, it's showing that this, that most consumers, when they're purchasing they're in their shopping cart, this is the amount that they're spending on edibles. If you wanna see how spending on a particular product form has changed over time, you can use the drop down to do just that um, and see how that about 
that shopping cart is changing over time. And then we have the license data. So this is where we're seeing that distribution of different cannabis license types that I mentioned earlier. Um, this data is coming from our Canna Connect uh, cannabis business contact list, uh, which is a separate product. Um, if you're interested in learning more, that link is in the tooltip as well. And then at the bottom, we also have the revenue by day of week to really help operators, retail operators understand, you know, when to expect more most of their sales and, and plan accordingly. Also potentially for brands, if they're doing a, a launch of a new product at a dispensary on, on premise and, and want to you know, know the best day to be there, uh, that could help with that. Unsurprisingly, while this is updated um, monthly, the, the, the trend seemed fairly consistent since the launch of this, um, this dashboard. So that's just the national level. Um, at the, unlike the consumer uh, dashboard and the retail one, uh, the widgets are going to change pretty significantly um, from location level to location level. So at the state level, we're going to see two familiar interactive data widgets um, and then three new ones. We have the average spend per transaction. So this is across product categories, how much a, people are a, a, a cannabis consumer in Arizona, how much that shopping cart is, is typically worth, um, how much they're spending over time. Uh, you can also isolate a particular year using the drop down or scroll through to adjust the time period displayed. And then um, say you're interested in, in um, you know, how often people are purchasing then or for individual consumers rather than shopping carts. Here is the average monthly spend per consumer widget, which is also from point of sale data and similar functionality to show how consumer spending is changing over time in your in the selected state. And as I mentioned earlier, um, more insights into the cannabis consumer profiles and archetypes within each state. So at the state level, and you'll also see this widget at the county level, we're pulling in uh, based on our consumer data, demographic uh, data and, and product trends, the top three cannabis consumer profiles in the state of Arizona. Um, if you want to learn more what sale and savvy means, you can click on that profile to see what the related archetype is, a brief description, and a few key demographic pieces of, of information, including how this individual would prefer to be contacted. So if you're marketing, you know, how what channels would be best for you to use, what product forms are most popular for this particular archetype, and where in the state of Arizona do they does this archetype tend to obtain their cannabis? So that's the state level of the retail data dashboard. Uh, moving to the county level, we're able to start to pull in some of that geolocation data to really understand um, foot traffic and visits in a particular county. Um, so here we can see how the count, how the um, top three profiles vary uh, from in a county versus the, the state as a whole. Um, and then we can see how, in this county, how many dispensary visits have been tracked over time. The geolocation data uh, is updated weekly, so it's something to, to uh, consistently check back to see how things are changing. And say that you have a dispensary uh, within this county and you want to know how you how your dispensary is comparing to a competitor. Um, or say you're a multi-state operator and you want to know how each location, uh, how their foot traffic is, is, is comparing. You're able to do that at the county level within the retail data dashboard and even narrow it down to a particular date range. Um, this data is available as of October 2020, and like I mentioned, it is updated weekly going forward. Um, so then to get even more uh, targeted, uh, we can go to the dispensary level where you're able to get an even deeper sense of uh, foot traffic and customer loyalty. So we have the visit profile widget here that is also using the geolocation data to show the breakdown between new visits versus return visits. Um, from, the from October, 2020 uh, to now, how many unique visitors have ever visited this, this retail location using the geolocation data available? Um, how frequently are they returning? Um, and the breakdown, so in tourist, you know, areas that this, the new visitors typically tend to be higher, uh, which can work towards to, to operators' advantages uh, at times. Um, and then we also have the dispensary uh, visit widget at the actual retail level. 
So here we can see from October 2020 to July, how many visitors have been tracked for this location and the breakdown uh, by cannabis consumer profile even. So in this, in this particular location, um, this is the, the sale and savvy is the top consumer profile that is uh, visiting. And then we can see how that stacks up. And what's particularly um, beneficial is for operators to understand is that, so we can see the visit counts, but then the marketable count speaks to the number of consumers in that zip code that meet, that, that are classified as that profile that could be visitors to that location. So they, there's 103,000 of, of these sale and savvy consumers in that area that could be visitors to help drive sales. And say you wanted to see how another dispensary nearby um, how, or a different location of, of the same um, operator, you can see how, how that stacks up um, to one, against one another as well. Um, within this map, uh, just a few navigational notes before we move on to the other features of Equio. Um, you are always able to exit out and return to a different level using the breadcrumb trail at the bottom of the map. You can also click uh, the home button to get back to the home page. Or if you know exactly which retailer you're particularly interested in, in looking at, you're able to use the search bar to pull that up as well. Speaking of search bars, um, I did want to call out that uh, one, one great feature is to use the, the global search. This is a great way to pull in um, the other data outside of the dashboards um, for a particular topic. Um, so I do like to call, call that out as well. So now that we've gotten through the interactive data dashboards, uh, I'll move quickly through the other, um, other primary features of Equio and then leave some time at the end for, for any questions that have come up. So in addition to the, the dashboards of interactive data widgets, we also have uh, all Equio subscriptions include access to our entire library of analyst reports and charts. Um, so within uh, the reports and charts section, uh, you're able to click, you can search for a particular uh, topic or select a report from the dropdown. Um, at the Equio basic level, you're able to view the entire contents of the report. And again, the Equio basic level is the one that does include the seven day free trial for new subscribers. So I'm currently logged in as an Equio Pro subscriber. So that's why I'm able to download. So that is one of the differences between the two, those two subscription levels. Um, and then you can also, another difference between the levels is going to be in our charts library. As you may have gathered by now, um, a lot of what uh, within Equio and, and New Frontier Data's extensive reporting and analysis, a big part of that is, is visualizing the data to make it as digestible and un understandable so that a, you know, a data science degree is not required to really benefit from um, our years of expertise in data collection. Um, so this is the charts library um, at the pro level because it includes licensing rights. You're able to download it without watermarks while at, at, at the Equio basic level, there'll be a watermark, but it's easy to quickly get that visualization of that data point, of those data points. Um, the Weedex widget is what is feeding into the stock ticker at the top across all of the pages. Um, and this is um, showing the performance of, a, of the publicly traded North American cannabis companies that meet our, our criteria. This widget in particular, the, um, the, the tooltip, uh, has an extensive methodology summary if you're interested in learning more about um, that, those criteria. Uh, you could, so within here, you're able to click on uh, using the stock ticker or in this page to, um, to look up a particular company or just if you want to understand how this, how uh, each sector is performing. The sector level is also where we're breaking out the hemp and CBD companies that are publicly traded and the Canadian companies versus the, the um, United States companies. You can also see across sectors, which companies are, or how they're performing against one another um, and which ones are leading and lagging. And at the, if you're in the company profile level, you're actually able to download in real time a company profile using this button and see, and that will also include how that company is performing in the context of their sector. Moving along to the data marketplace, this is where Equio subscribers are able to, depending on the subscription level, either purchase at Equio Basic or download at no additional cost at Equio Pro 
all of the source data behind our analyst reports. So when we say source data, it's not going to be um, like millions of, of data points. They're going, it's going to be the kind of condensed, consolidated, uh, the, 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 the meat of, of the data that, that's included in our, our reports. Um, so whether you have your own data sets and, and want to combine them to perform your own analysis, or even something as simple as wanting to um, you know, use our data to make a chart with your own branding, you're able to do that all with, with the data products in the data marketplace, which can all be sorted by region, segment, time period, and related analyst report. And then lastly, uh, before we get to the questions um, and kind of feature a uh, subscription level overview, um, is the Canabyte uh, section of Equio. So as I mentioned, all Equio subscriptions include access to all Canabyte subscription features. So this portion of Equio uh, is pulling in those premium portions of our Canabyte content library, which actually lives on our blog page. Um, but this is pulling it in to make, to just make it as easily accessible to Equio subscribers as possible. Um, the features of Canabyte, the premium features include access to our Canon clips, which are brief synopsis of uh, the highlights of our reports, our entire archive of industry webinars, um, presentation decks from in-person uh, speaking events, um, which contain some additional insights that may, that may or may not have been included in a recent report. Um, we're also at the Hemp Highlights, which is pulling a series of rotating charts. Um, we have not forgot about um, the hemp industry, and we are actually within, um, by the end of this year, we will have uh, the hemp, uh, entire, uh, an entire dashboard, a fourth dashboard dedicated to hemp. So um, be sure to subscribe to our newsletters to be informed when that is live, if that is something uh, that you are interested in. In the meantime, we also are pulling in the Cannabit, uh, which is a weekly newsletter um, providing brief visualizations. The benefit of this in Cannabite and Equio is that uh, unlike the newsletter, you're able to access our archives to easily search and get some additional insights. And um, the way that I think of Cannabite in context of Equio is that um, for if you're waiting for, for an analyst report on a particular subject or um, or just a, a current event, something major happens, our, our team is still covering that and, and what is likely working on, on a longer form piece. But in the meantime, the, the Canabyte is shorter form content. And so uh, we still want to make that information and provide our, our analysis on it. Um, but it just, given the, the nature of it being vetted, reliable, actionable, those longer form reports, it, it will take a little bit of time to get there. So it's, an, it's a wonderful supplemental resource to the rest of the resources and, and insights available in Equio. Um, so if you are not already a subscriber and are interested or um, need any future reference about some of the features that we discussed today, um, you're able to find those on our website. That's if you go to uh, newfrontierdata.com under the products and services bar, if you go to Equio, you'll land here. Um, this provides a nice recap of all of the, the points that we've discussed. Uh, at the bottom, you'll find the side-by-side -side comparison of pricing and features across the subscription levels. Um, at the Canabyte level, there is no access to any of what we just walked through, except for the Canabyte um, portion on the blog. It would, at the Canabyte level, you're not able to access the Equio dashboard. At the Equio level, though, you are able to access all of the features of Canabyte. And Equio Basic does have that seven-day free trial and all of those main features we discussed. Equio Pro, one thing that I will point out, uh, in addition to having the download capabilities um, and the access to over $100,000 worth of, of data products in the data marketplace, is that licensing rights um, so to, to use them for, for outside of internal business purposes, to use the data and findings. There are a few restrictions, but we have, uh, of, or, you know, how you're able to do that, but our, our um, FAQs have an entire section dedicated to answering those questions. Um, and the final thing I'll point out as far as the differences between levels is that uh, Equio Pro is uh, there's quarterly billing available or annual. There's no monthly pro option primarily due to those licensing rights because a month of a license will is, is likely would not be as, as beneficial. Um, and there is no annual commitment for, for any of our subscriptions at this time. So you are able to initiate a cancellation at any point and, and continue to have access to all, all of the features. Um, 
but uh, feel confident that you will want to stick around because we are constantly adding and updating new features and new insights into Equio and our reporting. So that concludes the, the bulk of the demo. So I'll go ahead and move to um, some questions that we have received. Um, one that I'm seeing is what is the source of the geolocation data? So the geolocation data is, um, that's a great question. So we have a, uh, some, a data partnership with a, a very well-known uh, data, uh, geolocation data provider. That is, um, uh, our, we have a press release about that, that's it's Foursquare. Um, so that, that is where it is from. Obviously with the geolocation data, if you know someone left their phone at home or something, uh, it may not capture every single visitor depending on, you know, if, 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 or if that setting is disabled, but it is consistent across locations. So it does provide a, a great, um, especially if you check regularly, uh, com comparative tool um, and, and does have a, captures a significant number of visits. Another question um, from, uh, related to data sourcing that came in is about the point of sale data. Similarly, we do have a point of sale data provider. They do have a presence in all of the um, of the legal markets, not just a handful um, of them, and um, that is in medical and, and adult use. Um, and so that, that is the source of, of the point of sale data, um, a data partnership. Um, so in addition to the um, data partnerships that are some of our data sources, we also uh, collect a lot of data from, as I mentioned, the consumer surveys, uh, extensive consumer surveys, some quantitative, some derivative, and then also um, a lot of, um, uh, we work with a lot of government uh, agencies and regulatory agencies um, for those data about, about tax rates, licensing, and um, the like. Let's see, we have another question um, to create customer demographics. Um, so our archetypes are, are some of that is from the consumer data, uh, consumer survey data, and then also from demographic information and census information that's that's made publicly available. So it's combining that with our other insights uh, to to form those those analyses. Um, as far as like traditional demographic data points that that do come in uh, to play, are things such as age and uh, and gender and um, and income and uh, a political affiliation, um, marital status, that type of data is all coming into play into the for uh, formulation of these um, customer demographics and archetypes, in addition to, of course, their product preferences and, um, and uh, purchasing behaviors. Oh, I also see a question that I um, is I'm glad someone asked um, about uh, from a former subscriber uh, interested in renewing their subscription. Um, so within, if you're ever interested in, if you were, were a subscriber for the uh, previous Equio platform and want to get in and, and check out the new platform, you're able to do that in the My Account portal. Um, that's where you'll be able to renew. Uh, also, if you do have a, a subscription and need to make any changes or start out with the free trial and want to upgrade, you're able to do that in the My Account portal by navigating to the My Subscription tab. Um, and then um, I also see a question about our analyst reports. Uh, if you're on the fence about um, signing up just yet for Equio and want to get a better sense of what types of reporting and what types of topics are included in our analyst reports, you're able to do that. Uh, we have, this provides a nice summary of our most recently published reports um, to learn a little bit more. And several of them are um, after, after they're released available for complimentary download. However, that is for a limited amount of time. Um, all right. And I believe that concludes, uh, well, I see one last question um, about the data marketplace. So the, uh, the data products that you can purchase, so that's in the data marketplace, it, it's um, at the Equio basic level, these are all included. So you would see an add to cart button, uh, the price would not be crossed out and you wouldn't see these download buttons. Um, you can, you're able to purchase individual data sets at, as, at the Equio basic level. Um, at the FBO Pro level, like I mentioned, you're able to, per to, to see them all. And um, if you click on any particular data product, you're able to learn a little bit more about 
um, what's included in it, why it might matter. Several of them also include charts to kind of highlight what uh, rows and columns are, are included, as well as a link to the methodology. Um, additional insight into the data set can also be found in, in the related report as well. These are all, for the most part, with a few exceptions, tied to an analyst report. Um, for now, we are exploring other ways to pull in, in, in more data. Um, at this time, the vast majority of the data within the widgets, is, it's not exportable um, it, or available in the, in the data marketplace. Uh, so there wouldn't be point of sale data in, in the uh, data marketplace. That was another question that came in. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions about um, or anything after you have some time to think about all of the information we walked through today, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to customer care at newfrontierdata.com. Um, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions you may have. There's also this support button if you are inside of Equio or already a subscriber. Um, this does allow you to um, browse our customer care knowledge base to find out a little bit more about um, the contents with some nice step-by-step -step guides and photos. Um, or you, if, if you would prefer to, uh, or have a very specific type of question, you can immediately submit a, a support request right in Equio as well. But again, that's customer care at newfrontierdata.com. And if you are ready to sign up, you're welcome to visit uh, equio.io, that's equio.io, and that will direct you to this page, or of course, just visit newfrontierdata.com. And with that said, um, thank you all for, for joining me today and for your, and sincerely thank you for your interest in Equio. Uh, we look forward and appreciate the opportunity to help your, your cannabis business intelligence needs and to really help you, um, you know, discover the market, engage your consumer and uh, compete to win. Thank you.